All right, and welcome to an exciting session on federal taxes. And this is called Federal Taxes and the Small Business Owner. The objectives of this session is really threefold. First, the types of federal taxes that a business in Washington may be required to pay. Secondly, the types of federal taxes that a small business owner may be required to pay. And then lastly, how to report and pay those taxes. This is a little bit about myself. What, what you see at the bottom of this slide is really not important, but what's more important is what I've been doing, you know, really since the last uh, uh, 10 years of my, uh, you know, since 2011, which is volunteering for SCORE. And I've really been doing two things for SCORE. The first is been uh, actively mentoring small business owners within the greater Seattle area uh, pr principally in the areas of finance, accounting, and taxes. And then secondly, uh, doing a number of different uh, SCORE hosted workshops as the instructor and also developing those workshops. Just a little bit about SCORE before we get started here. SCORE is a national organization having 10,000 volunteers in over 300 chapters and pretty much a chapter in every large city in the United States. In, in Seattle, in the greater Seattle area here, we have a very active chapter of about 90 volunteers <clears throat> in a variety of different disciplines and with experiences. And we really, and you know, the, the mission of SCORE is to help small business owners grow their business and become more profitable. And we, we provide three different types of services to, to help small business owners. The first is the one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentoring of small business owner service. And if you don't have a, of a, you don't have a mentor already, I would urge you to get one. It's very easy to do. You just go onto this website that you see on this, uh, on this slide here behind me and fill out a 10 minute uh, online form and you'll get yourself a SCORE mentor within a couple of days thereafter. And it's absolutely free. There's no charge whatsoever. We're all volunteers. Secondly, we host a number of different workshops in a variety of different topics uh, every month. And we, we offer about 12 to 15 workshops every month. So, you know, feel free to, to sign up for those and you may see me again there. And then lastly, there's a lot of good information on, on the SCORES website and the SBA's website that you can pull off absolutely free, no charge to you. So we are committed within SCORE to help small business owners this is our agenda here today. We'll be talking about federal taxes. First, the taxes on the business, and secondly, the taxes on the business owners relating to the profits made by that business. And then we'll conclude with a few items at the end. <clears throat> now, to get the most out of this session, I'm sure that you, you came with a lot of different uh, uh, questions and that you want to have answered at the end of it. Well, you know, as we're going through this, Feel free to put your questions in the Q and A, uh, and you know I'll be answering them as we go along, uh, right up until the end of the session. A th another thing that you can <clears throat> uh, do is to download this presentation so that you have have this as a you know as a guidelines for uh, what you what we talked about here today, and to help you remember what uh, you know some of the facts relating to the things that I'll be talking about, that I'll be sharing with you today. So let's get right into it with talking about federal taxes on businesses. Now, there are really three different federal taxes on small businesses. And they're only applicable if your business has employees. So if your business doesn't have employees, you could take a nap right now, but I'd really suggest that you don't because you may in the future have uh, employees, and so this would be applicable to you. So the, the three uh, key federal taxes on small businesses that have employees are Social Security tax, Medicare tax, and both of those are payroll taxes. And the, thir and the third one is federal unemployment tax, and we'll be talking about each one of these. So Social Security and Medicare taxes are, are taxes that are imposed on the business that has employees and also on all employees of that business. Now, 
what are the rates for Social Security and Medicare tax? Well, they are the rate for Social Security tax is is at the rate of 6.2 percent on the first $142,800 of wages paid to each employee per year. Okay. And that is paid equal, a 6.2% is paid by the employer, and another 6.2% is paid by the employee for a total of 12.4%. So it's a big tax, very big tax. Then Medicare tax is at the rate of 1.45%, and that is paid on all wages paid to the employees, regardless of how much you pay them during the year. And that 1.45% is paid equally by the employer, and another 1.45% is paid by the employee for a total of 2.9%. So when you put these two taxes together, it's a total of 15.3% paid, ha half paid by the employee, the other half paid by the employer. So you're looking at 7.65% of a tax on all wages paid being the employer. So let's take a little example of how this works. So let's say that this business in 2021 has two employees and each of them earn $40,000. So the, the business is going to pay $4,960 of social security taxes on its employees wages. And then another $1,160 of Medicare taxes. And that's, and that's shown in the computation on this slide. Then in addition to that, there's the two employees are going to have to pay uh, out of their paychecks, out of their gross wages, $6,120 of Social Security and Medicare taxes. And then it's the responsibility of the employer to take those, to take the employer portion of these taxes and the employee portion, along with any federal income tax that has been withheld from the employee's wages and send that into the IRS. Okay, so Big tax, big responsibility. So now you, you're, you're at a point in saying, well, geez, you know, I got employees. I got to do payroll because I got to pay these taxes. I got to pay my employees. So there's really three ways in which you go about paying uh, or doing payroll. You can do it manually, you know, with an Excel spreadsheet or pen and paper and things like that. You can engage a bookkeeper to do it for you, or you can contract with a payroll service. And there's a number of good payroll services. Well, if you do it manually, it's a lot of work. And I would not advise any small business owner to do it manually because, you know, look what you got to do. You got to compute the gross pay. You've got to determine how much taxes are withheld. Then you got to pay the employees and write out checks. And then you got to worry about paying the IRS, the, the, the federal income tax and the federal social security and Medicare taxes that you owe them. So it's a lot of work and a lot of responsibility. And you know, paying the federal payroll taxes gets really complex because they're depending upon how much you owe the IRS during a course of a year or course of a quarter, you know, the due date could be 30 days after the end of each quarter, or it could be as soon as three business days after the payment to the employee. So you got to know when your due date is, otherwise the IRS is going to be not be very happy and, and uh, hit you with some penalties. And we'll talk about how big those penalties are towards the end of the session. And then once you know how much you have to pay, you can't just write out a check and pay the IRS. You have to send it electronically through a system that's called EFTPS system. So a lot of responsibility and uh, some complexity. And then not only that, you have to report quarterly your federal payroll taxes that you have paid into the IRS on a four page form that's called form 941 that looks very similar to the image uh, on, this, on the right hand side of the screen. And this is due within 30 days after the end of each quarter. So you're gonna have four times during the year you're going to have to complete this form 941 and file it with the IRS. Then in addition to that, you've got the annual reporting of your federal payroll taxes on form W-2, a copy of which is given to the employees. And then, an, and then the co another copy along with a summary form, w, form W-3 
you have to send that in electronically to the Social Security Administration, who then shares that information to the IRS, okay? So that's a big responsibility to make sure that that's done properly. And so all your employees are satisfied and the Social Security Administration is satisfied. So I think what I've done here is, is provide you a lot of, is painted a picture of complexity. So in urging you never to do payroll by yourself, okay? Um, or do it manually. So the next option is using a bookkeeper. You know, the advantages of using a bookkeeper is that you, you know, they're normally very experienced and you have somebody to talk to and somebody to hold accountable to, hold their feet to the fire. The problem is it's more costly than any of the other two options. Um, they're going to use some type of a payroll system to do it uh, because they're not going to do it manually. And third, and I've had this experience with some of my score clients, what happens when the bookkeeper disappears or goes on vacation and you got to run payroll and you can't get a hold of them? So that, that's a, that could be a major problem for you and your business. So what most small business owners do is they contract with a payroll service. And the top four are shown on this slide, ADP, Paychex, QuickBooks, Payroll, and Gusto. And you know, what I would suggest to you is that of the, of the four, Gusto is probably the best of the four. Not only is it an easy system to use, but it's a highly competitive in their pricing, probably the lowest pricing of the, of the four of them. And it is a system that has been built for small businesses. And it has a number of different features that I won't go into here, but you know, it is pretty much based upon my experience with working with about 70 different score clients who use Gusto, that it pretty much does everything that you would want a payroll system to do. And it's all electronic, okay? So there's no paper involved. Employees are paid online. Automatic tax filings are taken care of by, by Gusto. You don't have to worry about making those or, re, or filling out those forms, Gus will do that for you and file it with the, with the federal and state agencies. They will also issue the form W-2s and electronically and through direct deposit pay the employees. So it's a, it's a really slick uh, system. And the price, like I said, is quite competitive. And you can see here that, uh, you know, what the cost, what the pricing is per employee. Now, <clears throat> So we, I painted a picture here of, you know, of two of the major uh, federal uh, payroll taxes. Um, also talked about how you do payroll and urging you to go with a payroll system. Now you're now you you have a choice. You know, when you have your first person that's working for you, are you going to call them an employee or are you going to call them an independent contractor? And that classification is really important because both the IRS and the state of Washington uh, have rules relating to when a worker has to be classified as an employee. However, the state of Washington rules are more restrictive than those of the IRS, so you need to follow the rules of the state of Washington when determining when a worker has to be classified as an employee. And really those rules, you know, here are three of the six rules, and these are the three that are that are most pertinent to businesses, you know, in the, in the event that your worker, uh, that the, you know, in order to be classified as an independent contractor, your worker has to be free of your business's direction and control. The worker has, to, the work has to be done away from all of your business, uh, normal place of business or your job sites. In other words, whoever is doing it needs to be able to do it wherever they want to and whenever they want to, okay? and without your supervision. And another key thing is that they have to be doing this same type of service or similar service for other businesses. And if you fail any one of those restrictive rules, you have to call the, you have to classify the, the worker as an employee. You cannot be classified as an independent contractor. So the Washington rules are very restrictive in this area. Now you can say, well, geez, what happens if I don't 
class if I classify a person a worker that should be an employee, but I classify them as a independent contractor because it's less costly for me. Well, the risks of non-compliance are are quite lengthy. It involves payment of back taxes, interest, penalties, and probably the worst one of all is that you'd go through an audit. And auditors demand a lot of at your attention and a lot of information. And I'd never wish an audit on anybody. So avoiding audits are, are a key thing because they, are, they chew up your time that you should be focusing on growing your business. So make sure that you are classifying your workers properly as either employees or independent contractors. The last federal tax that we'll be talking about uh, is federal unemployment tax. It's a small tax. It amounts to about $42 per employee per year. And, and the way that you go about reporting and paying this, uh, this tax is you complete this form 940. It's a two-page form quite easily. And you pay the tax within 30 days after the end of each calendar year. Now, if you contract with a payroll service like Gusto or ADP, they will make that payment for you and file this uh, uh, tax return, this form 940 on your behalf. So that's a summary of the federal taxes on businesses. And, and just to summarize here, there's three, social security tax, Medicare tax, and federal unemployment tax. And these are only if you, your business has employees. And then we talked a little bit about uh, using a payroll service to do your payroll. And I would recommend Gusto because it is uh, among the three, the best for small businesses. And then lastly, make sure you're classifying your workers in your business properly as either employees or independent contractors. So that's the end of this part of our work of our session. Now I'd like to talk about federal taxes on the business's profits that are paid by the owners. Now remember that you know pretty much for all small businesses the business does not pay the federal taxes or the federal taxes on the business's profits. The owners pay the uh, federal taxes on the business's profits. Very important concept. So the reason why that occurs is because the types, the entities that most small businesses have, which are either sole proprietorships, partnerships, or S corporations, are what are called pass-through entities. And what happens with pass-through entities is that the profits on these pass-through entities are not taxed at the entity level, in other words, the business level, but the profits are taxed at the owner's level. Okay, in other words, the owner pays the, the taxes on the business's profits. Okay, I'd like to make some definitions here because we'll be using some of these during the course of the, of the uh, latter part of this uh, session. You know, when I talk about profits, think of them as your sales minus all of your business expenses. And when I talk about deductions, think of them as equivalent to your, your uh, 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 business-related expenses, except for some small differences. And then lastly, when I talk about taxable income, think of it as synonymously as profits, okay? And profits, again, are your sales minus all of your business expenses. And then lastly, a, a, a term that we'll not be using, but it's important to keep in mind, is that, you know, from time to time, you're going to take money out of the business uh, for your own personal expenses or to put into savings, okay? Those are really called owner's distribution or owner's draws. And the money that you take out of your business and, and give to yourself is not taxable income to you. And it is not a business expense, okay? You as a business owner are, are taxed on your business's profits, not on the money that you take out of your business. Now they could coincidentally be the same, but they're usually not the same, okay? So you're taxed on profits, you're not taxed on the cash that you take out of your business. Important concept. So when we talk about deductions there, you know, it's really a combination of all of the, your, your 
business related expenses that you that are paid by or for your business with some differences. The first difference is that uh, certain business meals are not uh, deductible or only partial, partially deductible and that charitable contributions cannot be deducted at the business level. They could be deducted at the, at the owner level if that owner itemizes his or her deductions on schedule A. If not, you don't get any deduction whatsoever. Some additions to deductions are things like depreciation on equipment that you buy, a very popular one since COVID, which is the business use of home deduction and the business use of personal vehicle deduction. Okay. And then, you know, need, needless to say, personal expenses, personal expenditures are never deductions. And I give you some examples here. So let's talk about the key federal taxes on, on small business owners based upon the business's profits. And there are really two. The first one is self-employment tax, and the second one is federal personal income tax. And we'll talk in depth about both of these. So federal self-employment tax is a tax that is assessed on all, business, on all owners of a business when the business is treated as either a sole proprietorship or a partnership, okay? So if your business is an S corporation, you don't have to worry about self-employment tax, but you do have to worry about uh, Social Security and Medicare tax because you are an employee, you, the owner of the business, are an employee of your business. So what are the rates for self-employment tax? Well, self-employment tax is at the rate of 15.3% on the first $142,800 of your business's profits. Wow, that could be over $20,000 in a year. And then if you're in a good situation and you have profits in excess of $142,800, the tax rate goes down to 2.9%. Now, you're probably thinking, I've heard that 15.3% before, you know, just about 15 minutes ago when you were talking about Social Security and Medicare tax. And this self-employment tax is really the combination of the employers and the employees portion of both Social Security and Medicare tax. So what the what so you are paying self-employment tax is really Social Security and Medicare tax on the business's profits. Okay. Since you are both the employer and, the, and an employee and effectively an employee of your business. Okay. So let me give you an example of, of how this works. So let's say this business and the business, the, this business has no employees and it's, uh, it's just run by its owner, Bob Long. He has business profits of $80,000. Well, he's going to have to pay $12,240 of self-employment tax to the federal government. Wow, that's a big amount of tax. Now, he does get a deduction from his personal taxable income for one half of that 12,240, but that's probably only gonna save him about $1,000 in federal income taxes, okay? So he's got a bill of $12,240 and we haven't even calculated yet his personal income tax. Wow. So how do you go about uh, reporting self-employment tax uh, to the Internal Revenue Service? Well, it's really calculated on a form that's attached to your Form 1040, and that is called Schedule SE. And But before you can complete the Schedule SE, you have to complete either Schedule C for sole proprietorships or Form 1065 uh, if your business is a partnership. So let's get into that directly. So, you know, there, we're talking about three different types of, of, uh, of taxing regimes here, the sole proprietorship, partnership, or S corporation. Now, most small businesses fall under the sole proprietorship. So they're going to be reporting their profit in, or their income and expenses on what's called a Schedule C, and which gets attached to their Form 1040. Now let's just look mechanically on how the profit from your business that is shown on Schedule C flows through to your Form 1040. And it looks like this. So we take the 
taxable income from line 31 on Schedule C. We put that on Schedule 1 on line 3. And then the total from lines 1 through 7 uh, get put on line 8 of Schedule 1, which gets placed on the, on the face of the Form 1040. And that is comprised with all of your other taxable income that you have to arrive at, at taxable income on which your federal income tax is calculated. Okay, so let's go through an example of how this could work for a married couple with, a, with one spouse being a small business owner and the other spouse being an employee of an of a unrelated company. So here we have spouse A making $75,000 with W-2 wages. The couple has interest income of, of $500. And then the sole proprietor or the, the second spouse is a has a business profit of $62,000. Well, first of all, we go ahead and calculate what the self-employment tax in is on that $62,000. And that's a little bit less than $9,500. So we take one half of that <clears throat> and the couple gets a deduction for one half of that self-employment tax. Okay, then they get their standard deduction for married filing jointly of about $24,800. And then they also get something that's called the qualified business income deduction, which is really 20% 20, 20 of the business's income or business's profits, less the uh, deduction for the one half of the self-employment tax. And so when you, so we, we get a total of $96,506 of taxable income on which the personal income tax is $12,728. So I'll now, now I'll put my head over that number again. And that number is gonna come up in, in two slides here again, because I'm gonna show you how I calculated that. Now where, how I calculated that was based upon this, these tax tables. These are the tax tables that are in effect for whether you're unmarried or whether you're married. And we're going to be focusing on the married filing jointly here because that's we have a couple that is married filing jointly in this example. This, these are the 2021 federal income tax rates. So we take those rates and then we go through a computation. And now I'll move out of your these numbers here. So on the first $19,900 of taxable income, that is taxed at 10%. The next $61,150 is taxed at 12%, relatively low tax rates. But then the, net, the final $15,707 of that taxable income is taxed at the rate of, three, of 22%. So we add up all of those, those federal income taxes and we come to a total of $12,728. We add on to that the self-employment tax that we calculated previously of $9,486, and we come up with the total federal taxes that this couple needs to pay of $22,214. Wow, that's a lot of taxes on taxable income of only about $96,000, okay? So, you know... Federal taxes can take a big chunk of money out of a, a couple's uh, uh, money that they have available for living. Okay. Now, how do you know? You got to think about how you go about paying those federal taxes. Well, you know, there's two ways you could do it. You could wait till April 15 once you've uh, filled out all your tax forms and pay all that tax at once. The problem with that is you're going to get hit with an underpayment penalty. The other, there are other two ways here that I won't go into details on, but you know, you can, you can go through a simple calculation and that's what, uh, another reason why you want to download this presentation. So you have this calculation to come up with a very simple way to estimate your, your uh, taxes that you need to pay on a quarterly basis. And these are the due dates that you'd need to pay your estimated federal self-employment and federal income taxes on. These are due dates that have been in existence for over 40 years. They don't change, okay? So that's how you would go about uh, uh, when you need to pay them. And then lastly, you know, how you go about paying them. Well, a good way is to take this, uh, download this uh, form 1040ES from the IRS's website 
fill it out. You don't even have to sign it. Uh, put the, the amount that you're paying, attach a check, put it in the mail, and hope and pray that the United States Postal Service delivers it to, to the IRS, and then hope and pray again that the IRS doesn't lose it. So a better way is to use this EFTPS system, which you can send your money electronically directly on the date that you want it to be paid. And you know that the IRS gets it in that case. So I always recommend using the EFTPS system to pay your estimated federal taxes. So in summary here, you know, we've gone over two different types of taxes that are that a business owner has to pay on the business's profits, self-employment tax. And remember, that's just a combination of Social Security and Medicare tax and federal personal income tax and how that is calculated. And then we also talked about how best to go about paying the uh, uh, or calculating and paying the federal estimated taxes and using the EFTPS system on the quarterly due dates. Now let's conclude with some other items that I'd like to touch on in the last few minutes of this uh, uh, session. You know, now that you have, you know, you wanna just pay the, the agent, the uh, uh, taxing agencies just the right amount, not too much, not too little, just the exact amount, okay? The way that you do that is you have good records and good record keeping system, okay? And another reason why you wanna have a good record keeping system is in, in, the, in the event that you get audited, that auditor is going to wanna to see records from the past and documents from the past. So you need to be able to keep a good record keeping system. What do you need to keep? I think if you look over this list here that I have on this slide, you're going to see that you need to keep pretty much every, every documentation relating to the transactions in your business. How do you keep that? Well, the good thing is that you can either keep them electronically, in other words, as PDF or pay, JPEG files, or you can keep them as paper. Just remember, have a good filing system for whatever you use, uh, and a shoebox doesn't cut it, okay? Make sure that you have a, a filing system that files your, your documentation of your transactions, preferably on a monthly basis. And then lastly, how long should you keep them? You know, the statute of limitations is three years, but the IRS can invoke a seven year statute of limitations. So I always recommend that, that SCORE clients keep their uh, documentation for a seven year period from the date that the related tax return is filed for that year. In other words, for 2020, the tax return is filed in 2021, you keep them seven years after 2021, which would be 2028 when you can get rid of the, the documentation for the year 2020. So it's a, it's a long time, you gotta keep records. You know, taxes are inevitable. You need to, you know, once those taxes are due, you need to pay them. So, you know, use all legal means to save and defer taxes, but pay the taxes when they're due and don't use the IRS or the state of Washington as a lender because they don't, they charge a, a, a fair amount of interest and potentially penalties for not paying your taxes timely. One word of advice, never ever ever get behind on paying federal payroll taxes. And we talked about the social security and Medicare tax and the federal withholding taxes, federal income tax withholding from your employees. You get behind on those, the penalties can be up to 100% of what you failed to pay, okay? So never, ever, ever get behind on paying federal payroll taxes. So what have we learned in this session? Well, we've learned about the types of federal taxes that a business in Washington may be required to pay if they have employees, and the types of federal taxes that a small business owner may be required to pay and how to go about reporting and paying those taxes. So I'm sure you've had questions and I've been doing my best to answer them during this workshop. Please continue to ask those questions and, uh, and I'll be answering those as we go along here. 
you don't have a SCORE mentor, get one. It's easy to do and you'll never regret it. If you have a question about this session, download this, this, uh, this uh, presentation because you'll get my email address there and you can send me an email and ask that question if you haven't, if you don't do it in the Q&A session here. And please take these learnings that you had here today and implement them in your business because you know, paying taxes is inevitable. Just pay the right amount of taxes, pay them timely and move on to growing your business uh, and generating the types of, of uh, growth and profits that your business, you and your business deserve. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much for, part, for participating in this session. Um, and, uh, and please, if you have any questions, use that uh, Q&A function and I'll be responding to those as we continue here today. Thank you. Thank you.